Today, we need to see if the 5070 is faster than a 4090. Jokes aside, you guys know the drill. We're gonna look at all the pros and cons of the 5070. We're gonna look at cooler design, thermal performance, noise, overclocking headroom, and overall benchmarks. And then at the end of the video, I actually do wanna check to see what four times frame gen on the 5070 feels like compared to native on a 4090. But first, before we get into the overclocking and the benchmarks, let's go over the cooler of the 5070 Founders Edition because there's a pro tip I need to show you guys if you do manage to run this card. So when I first got the card, I threw it in my PC and it was running really hot, like way too hot, like 80 Celsius hot. And I thought maybe I got a defective card. So then what I did is I actually put my hand on both fin stacks the right one was hot and the left one was cold. So if you look closely at the design here, the right side is a pass-through design and the left is a blower. So the 5070 doesn't have the same PCB layout as the 5080 and the 5090, right? So we're not going to take it apart today. We'll do that in a future video just to kind of see what NVIDIA's got cooking under here. But the key reason why the 5070 was running so hot when I first got it, and the pro tip for this video, follow me. Okay, so this is a standard kind of PC case. I think it's like a Corsair 5000D or something. But the important thing to look at when you're incorporating the 5070 into a build are these PCIe kind of slot holders. You can kind of see where I'm going with this. So if we put in the 5070, let's just slot it in here. You can see right here, this kind of bracket thing, so it's, when it's actually screwed in, it blocks like 30% of that exhaust from the left side blower over here from actually exiting the card properly. So if we go to the upstairs test bench here, you can see how I fixed it is I just cut, I mean, I took a pair of tin snips here and then I just cut the, uh, the support bracket off. And then when you put the 5070 in, it has full exhaust. That alone dropped the temperatures by about seven or eight Celsius just doing that. Now, a lot of cases have these removable. A lot of them don't, right? If, it, if you don't, you can just tin snip it. It doesn't affect anything. The rigidity is still all good. But if you do get a 5070 Founders Edition, there's your pro tip. So if you do get a 5070 Founders Edition, after you install it, make sure to check to see if anything is blocking the exhaust ports here. It makes a big difference. So with that out of the way, let's go install this bad boy and go and see how much overclocking headroom it has and then kind of run some benchmarks and see what graphics card of older generations it's comparable to. Okay, so we just started with some preliminary numbers here. I benchmarked a Port Royal, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and uh, Dawn Trail just to get some out-of-the-box numbers, right? Now we're going to check the overclocking headroom of the card, and it looks very exceptional. So this card, the 5070, unlike the 5070 Ti and the uh, 5080, this one doesn't seem to be power limited at all. They, they gave this card more than enough power headroom to crank all the sliders, the voltage and the power and everything, and you're not limited by the actual power limit of the card. In fact, on this card, we're actually limited by the temperature. It's hitting about 80 Celsius at about 250 watts, even with the uh, PCI Express slot cut out, right? So the cooler on this one does struggle to cool over about 250 watts, but that doesn't seem to matter too much. We're hitting a consistent 3200 megahertz. So the overclocking headroom on this one is massive. 
but let's say you wanted to run the card completely stock out of the box. What kind of performance uh, tier are you looking at? It looks like, based on the numbers that I just ran, it looks about the exact same as like a 3080 Ti, 3090 level, which is fantastic. So for $549, you're basically getting a 3090. Yeah, we're doing Port Royal now in max overclock mode, and we're hitting about 270 watts, and the card is not throttling at all, so power limit is not an issue on this model whatsoever, which is really great to see. Okay, so we're doing Shadow of the Tomb Raider in 4K high settings. Again, we're pulling about 270 watts here, and the graphics card is just starting to hit about 80 celsius and the fans are really starting to ramp up so personally i wouldn't run the card this hard um even though they're giving you the most power limit available it's a bit too loud to be gaming on so here let me put the mic closer here it's blowing harder than your sister last night but if you're just using it out of the box i would not touch the voltage slider leave the voltage stock so that it doesn't pull that much power and it'll run much quieter so after I ran the benchmarks, this card has about 13% overclocking headroom built into it. Now, when you overclock this card, though, don't move the voltage slider to the right. Just leave it at stock voltages because this cooler is just too small to be able to handle the extra power output for the extra 100 megahertz. So if you want to know where the performance of this card is... TLDR, it's really easy. Let's say out of the box, you just don't touch it and you run it as is. It's about a 4070 Ti slash 3080 Ti performance out of the box. And then if you do a max overclock on it, it's basically the equivalent of a overclocked 3090 Ti or a 4070 Ti Super, which is fantastic to see. I actually didn't like the 4070 last gen too much because uh, the 4070 was basically just a 3080. And, you know, in 2024, 2025 now, 3080 level performance is kind of starting to show its age. It's getting kind of long on the tooth. Now, that's not to say the 3080 was a bad card. It's more like game developers are starting to get kind of lazy and not optimize their games very well. So 3080s are really starting to struggle now. For the folks that really want to compete seriously in esports and not have their PCs hold them back, you basically do want that 4070 Super slash 3080 Ti minimum. My recommendation for running this thing, I would pair this with a high refresh 1440p monitor with an OLED though, right? Now, the reason why I say that is I wouldn't run this specific card on a 4K monitor, even though it can do it. I mean, you saw that it had 120 F 134 FPS in Tomb Raider 4K high settings. It can do it. It's more like the... It runs too loud when you try and pull that much power out of a 4K screen. So if you just bring that down to a 1440p screen or a 1080p screen, now all of a sudden it's not going to pull as much power and it's going to land right in the sweet spot of the cooling performance of this card. Keep in mind, I am specifically talking about the Founders Edition. There may be AIB cards out there that run way cooler, in which case those would be fine at 4K. So this is the graphics card you definitely get for your little cousin Timmy, who wants to be an aspiring esports pro. Now there's one more little thing I want to touch on before we get on to the frame gen. I'm not sure if you guys heard in that audio clip, but my 5070 specifically has quite a bit of coil whine. Now, in 2025, it, it, it's quite mind-blowing, but there is still so much misinformation about coil wine out there that I have to address it. Coil wine is basically completely random and is not dependent on the card or the manufacturer of the card. So you can have five different 5070s. One of them might coil wine. The other one might coil wine a little bit less. You might have one from Asus. You might have one from... It's completely random, guys. So when you see these large tech tubers say, my 5090 has coil wine or whatever, that does not mean that if you buy the exact same card, that yours will have coil wine. 
Because, for example, my 5080 and my 5070 Ti had zero coil wine whatsoever, but then other reviewers, their cards did have coil wine. It's basically just a lottery, guys. Now, you can fix coil wine yourself. I've never Aura made a card for coil wine before. I just fix it myself, and I will be including that in the PC Optimization Masterclass. I will also include that video in the Discord. Now, the last thing I want to check on this card is what Jensen said. Let's go see if the 5070 in frame gen mode looks as good as a 4090 in native. Let's just go see if our eyes can tell the difference. Okay, so we're in Cyberpunk here, and when we go to settings, it basically has all the same settings as the old uh, 5080 video, right? So we're going to use DLSS Super Resolution Transformer Model. Uh, balanced uh, setting for the super resolution, DLSS frame gen, and then we'll try three times and four times. Now this is a 4K 240 hertz monitor, and the goal is to see if frame gen can actually compete with native. Now, yeah, it's it's basically I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's gonna come down to a motion blur type of thing, right? So right now at three times frame gen, we are at 72 FPS and 64 FPS in the 1% lows. But it just looks like, uh, it looks like motion blur is cranked up to the max. Now, one thing that is bothering me here is that when I move the mouse around, this little symbol here where it says 90 meters, it has shimmering around it. I'm going to try and actually record it in slow-mo with my phone so you guys can see it. And then we'll compare it with a 4090. So check this out. So, slow-mo. So you can see it shimmering around the little 90M lettering. So we're in the mid-70s for FPS with three times frame gen. I'd say, again, this, this is playable, no problem, right? And then let's try four times frame gen, and yeah, no dice. I, I would say, I, I would say the motion blur is fine, and the, and the frames are fine. It's more, it's more the input lag that's killing it for me. Yeah, the input lag is a bit too high, so when I move the mouse, it takes about a millisecond for it to actually respond. Or a millisecond in my mind, anyway. And, ooh, the shimmering around the lettering is actually worse as well. Let me try to actually record that. Okay, so we just swapped over to the 4090. I loaded up in the exact same spot here. And then for the settings, we did super resolution, transformer model, all the same stuff. Uh, balanced, re balanced DLSS mode. Now for frame generation, um, the ADA architecture only supports two times frame generation. So that's what we're using here. And I will say that... So it's interesting because the FPS is technically lower than the 5070, right? So we're actually at 84 FPS, whereas the uh, 5070 was at like 110 or something like that, if I can't remember. But the uh, this is like, yeah, like this is way better. So I'm actually going to record my phone again in slow-mo, this little 90 meters symbol here. Check this out. No shimmering at all. So it just goes to show you that frames aren't everything when it comes to gameplay experience, right? So you could have this, man, I've been talking about this with the AM dip and everything for God knows how long. It's not always about the frame rate, clearly, right? So when you enable four times frame gen on a 5070, your... FPS and your 1% lows are technically higher, and yet the game doesn't look as good as two times frame generation on a 4090, and the FPS is lower. The input lag is like half the speed. That's a good thing. It means uh, half the response time, right? It's snappy. It's instantaneous. There's no shimmering. 
right? It's like your native is always going to be kind of the bee's knees when it comes to gameplay experience. So, I mean, technically speaking, if you do enable frame gen, the 5070 is faster than a 4090, according to the FPS numbers, right? Which is pretty funny. But uh, yeah, so going forward, tuning machines and giving recommendations based on the user experience is going to be critical with more and more technologies coming out that affect your image quality and your experience motion blur input latency you're going to have a whole wide range of different feels and gaming experiences so I also did check the card out on my 1440p monitor. I was using 1330p 25 inch mode, but regardless, it was hitting 480 FPS in Overwatch, 300 in Deadlock, no problem. Think of this card as a 1440p eSports card. Now the last reason why I recommend that you pair this thing with a 1440p high refresh monitor is the 12 gigs of VRAM, right? So if you're running 4K monitor, 4K high resolution textures, you'll fill up the 12 gigs qu quite quickly. If you're a 4K gamer, I would really try and spring for that 5070 Ti if you can afford it, or maybe go back last gen to the 4070 Ti Super to get that 16 gigs of VRAM. If you're a single player gamer, again, I highly recommend that you pair this with a 1440p OLED monitor, and that way you get the full fidelity of single player HDR gaming without the high power draw and without the high VRAM usage. Graphics cards are just tools, just like frame gen is just a tool. You have to pair the right tools for the right jobs. Or if you want to put this in a mobile LAN party PC and you throw like a 1080p monitor with it, yeah, you got a sick mobile esports rig. Is the 5070 faster than a 4090? Maybe. Depends how you look at it. I mean, if you want to ask the COD Bro optimizers, all they care about is that FPS number in the top left. So, uh, yes, the 5070 is faster than a 4090. And as always, guys, lock it in here, hit that subscribe button if you want information on real gaming experiences from a tech tuber that actually plays games. And I'll see you in the next one. Talk to you later.